face that this world has forgotten. What's up guys? Now before going into this week's episode, I do want to encourage you guys to check out last week episode versus Incineroar and Houndoom. Uh, with my good friend Joel where it took a minority I sadly released that episode during the Hyper Ultra Sun and Moon and I really feel that it got lost in the void so if you missed out on this episode make sure to check this one out so with that said let's go into today's matchup Ooh, what's up guys and of course welcome to another episode of who was really better now this week we're gonna cover the two rock water combination Caracosta for Generation 5 versus Barbarical for Generation 6. Now this typing is fairly unique being there only all five Pokemon with this combination. We talked about the likes of Relicant, Cavitops, Omastar wasn't revisited to Generation 5 and I think Generation 5 and 6 represent a very strong combination of what this typing really can be and these two are actually on par with one another but doing different things so it's very very interesting to talk about them since they are so much alike before going into them individually i do want to talk about the combination of timing itself so rock and water is one of those combinations i would say are a very very heavy stamina typing that is that there are a lot of things resistant that are commonplace we're talking about lights of fire of course strong resisting in that resistant flying ice normal poison which are a very very strong combination on their own while the weaknesses does speak for themselves electric fighting ground and of course very weak to grass makes it siphon easily to be forced out against certain matchup but at the same time this combination of timing will mean that you hit something very very good offensively really well and you're very capable of forcing pokemon out to the lacked combination there are usually pokemon cover either of these fields and of course fire and flying is a very strong combination on their own lacking these will mean that usually that you can force out the pokemon at hand meaning that if something comes in it may very likely get hit very 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 hard and consider the combination of what both Caracosta and Roberto are representing the things that can hit this super effectively with stabs aren't necessarily that easily switched in I think only fighting cybers represent the strongest combination of this in general the other one being actually hit for very very high damage due to the lack of stamina on their own or of course hitting super effectively back so with that said the combination is very very strong and it's up to of course the Pokemon themselves how strong they are with this combination. So let's first talk about of course Caracosta. For those who are unaware, Caracosta actually is one of my favorite Generation 5 Pokemon in general and has a lot to do with that this Pokemon can solve a lot of roles really really well. There really aren't anything that Caracosta can't do, though it doesn't excel in anything of them. But at the same time, it's definitely overall decent, if not over average, in all of them. So the stats on their own do speak for themselves. 74 HP, 105 attack, 133 in defense, 83 special attack, 65 in special defense and 32 in speed so yeah it's more of a bulkier pokemon with a low special defense hits actually a fairly decent on the special attack side and has a very very high attack stat together with defensive side making it a very very good tank overall um definitely should be noted here that special defense is something that is holding it back somewhat and of course the speed isn't necessarily helping it quite a lot but overall hits very very hard very hard to switch into if it is walling out something something that comes in the switching is going to get hurt and this is something Caracosta really does well and being of course having that special attack of 83 does mean that it works as a special mixed wall too if you want to capitalize on it and it has the move pull to pull that roll off certainly well when it comes to its abilities however it really really does enforce the combination it can do we have solid rock which reduces 25 percent of super effective damage which always is helpful for attacking mon we have sturdy which makes sure that you aren't wanted ko'd and definitely would like a weakness policy consider your weaknesses this is something that could easily be capitalized on and of course it's swift swim while it isn't the speediest pokemon around it definitely should be enforced on that it's still with swift swim you can outspeed base 105 pokemons and that's always going to be a great thing. You still hit hard as it is already, so being able to capitalize on that speed, which aren't really there, is very, very, very nice. Since you don't expect this Pokemon to be speedy in the first place, it is nice to know that it can capitalize on that if it's forced to. That said, though, Solid Rock and Sturdy are always going to be your bread and butter. And from my opinion, I think Solid Rock makes this Pokemon very, very good because of the tankiness of the Pokemon itself. And consider its weaknesses, it does really enforce this Pokemon's stamina as its own. But where things start to shine is in Caracosta's move pool, 
because as stated before, low speed, it's very good to have priority in this and here is where Kara Costa delivers. Aqua Jet is definitely something that is there. We have Ancient Power to capitalize on the special side, Crunch, Hydro Pump, Aqua Tail, Ice Beam Blizzard, Earthquake, Rock Tomb, Rock Slide, Focus Blast, so even furthermore, more special attacks that can enforce this on. Scald, Stone Age, Bulldoze, Sin Hitbutt, Iron Hit, Low Kick, Block to be able to actually set up or even just lock a Pokemon down with your stamina alone. Earth Power, Iron Tail, Curse, Shell Smash, which of course is one of those really, really brilliant and bottom um, attacks for Sturdy. But overall, it does really make Karakasa very, very intimidating because of course, of both going mixed attack and special attack at the same time and double the speed up. Superpower, very good and even better now with 5GMC in mind. Surf Waterfall, Knockoff, Water Pulse, Stealth Rock, Liquidation, and God Swap. Now, God Swap is interesting because due to the Shell Smash capabilities, Capitalize on Guard Shop or Guard Swap really just help it out quite a lot because that means that not only are you remaining your attack very high you can swap your defenses with the other opposing pokemon or, or that it can be very very good because all of a sudden you actually got your defenses back your double the speed and of course double the attack in both especially and offensively however now when it comes to combination of move pool it really should be enforced here that Karakasa's attack is very good scald knockoff Stealth Frogs and just filler moves, however, it's really, really good. Now with Liquidation, if you don't want to capitalize on Skulls, since you actually was over this defense with 20% chance. So, it really got a buff with Liquidation in mind, and just overall, there's a filler move pool on Karakasa that does really enforces the pull, the tank using nature of it really well. And also, it can work as a both early game sweeper and a late game sweeper. That attack being double the power, yeah, things are free falling at that point, and with those heavy attacks like Stone Edge, waterfall and of course aqua jet to be actually able to have speed any prioritized user it's going to hurt and it's going to hurt really well i really like myself to of course be enforced to capitalize on weakness policy and shell at the same time and of course not being weak to sandstorm and actually not being buff means that you can keep your one hp intact the only thing you gotta watch out for are of course other priority users and hail but overall Karakasa is a very 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 strong threat even though resides at a lower tier is very viable in almost every tier they send just if you're gonna use the right moves in mind so with that said how can barbarical even compete with this monster so when i say the barbarical and Karakasa are on part with one another i really meant that when we're looking upon the stats here, there really aren't that big of a shift. We have 72 in HP, we have 105 in attack, so roughly the same. 115 in defense, so not as bulk in the defensive side. Uh, special attack and special defense are switched on the Barbarical, meaning we have less special attack but more special defense. And of course, Barbarical is speedier than Karakasta. It is double the speed in base speed, so it's very, very strongly suggested here that Barbarical is more towards being physically active don't necessarily capitalize on special attack but it is speedier so it's able to have speed threat that Karakasa never could have done in the first place so it's very clear here that Barbarical is enforcing a new concept on the typing itself which makes Barbarical fairly interesting and of course you know the Pokemon is only as good as its abilities and Moop will make it out to be so let's talk about their abilities on their own. Now the abilities in my opinion are a mixed bag, they're not as diverse as Karakasta's is. We have Pickpocket, which of course makes sure that when you have physical contact, you work like Thief. So if you capitalize on, for example, Power Herb and Skull Bash, you can actually, with normal gem, snag an item. That's always nice, but that's definitely not what you're going to capitalize on. Sniper, of course, boosts your critical hit ratio, which is good for Lies of Cross Shop, Night Slash, which are moves that this Pokemon actually do get. Though there are high risks since you don't actually they are all these moves are able to miss to some extent and of course while a, a nice crit stone edge is always nice one should definitely take this in mind that missing a stone edge yeah that's one of the really really tough rundowns one really has to face that said though we have tough claw tough claw yeah that's that's the ability you're gonna go with more often than not and has a very very strong reasons it is basically a life or boost to every physical attack that are a contact move, even special attacks with contact move, which really aren't that many, but this one gets to one of the few, making Barbarical one of those that really, really hit hard. It definitely hits a lot harder than Karakasa ever could do, but it also at the same time misses certain moves that it could have capitalized on with, of course, this ability in mind. But with that said, let's look actually at this move pull on its own. 
And this didn't really go without saying before I go over the moves themselves. This Pokemon gets Shell Smash, which means that not only we get double attacks and of course plus the Tough Claw boost, we also have a speed tier here which are able to outspeed base 135 base Pokemon, which will mean after one Shell Smash that the likes of Mega Manistrick, for example, cannot outspeed this threat. It is not able to, and this is very, very, very scary. It also outspeed base 100 Scoffers, so keep that in mind if anything. But yeah, outside of that, we have Night Slash, Razor Claw, Cross Shop, Stone Edge, Skull Bash, Ice Beam, Bulk Up, Earthquake, Return, Brick Break, Sludge Wave, Air Lace, Focus Blast, Shadow Claw, Surf, Sword Stance, Bulldoze, Rock Slide, Exizor, Stealth Rocks on this Pokemon too, Poison Jab, Grass Knot, and of course Grass Knot is something that is counted as a physical contact move, so it's boosted by 33% by Tough Claw, that's kinda scary, Low Kick, Earth Power, Liquidation from of course this game Ultra Sun and Moon, Dual Chop, Superpower, and Ever, Shadow Mask clearly, and Switcheroo. Reason I mentioned Switcheroo is because this Pokemon is an excellent scoffer, and it also can ruin teams by of course their defensive responses being switched with of course a possible choice of scoff. But overall this Pokemon definitely could have really really needed knockout, which is something Tracosta is using. That said though, the moves on this Pokemon are a lot broader, there are a lot of stronger filler moves, of course, Sludge Wave and Grass, not a very, very strong special attack that it can actually capitalize on. And of course, Earth Power, stuff like that. While it isn't like the strongest special attacker, due to Shell Smash, it is able to capitalize on that special attack and tap into that. And consider your speed, you're actually able to both be a mixed wall here too, or a mixed wall breaker. Uh, that said though, for the longest time here, Barbarical was residing in Capitalize and Razor Shell would always could miss with Tough Claw. Not only now do we get a stronger move in Liquidation, we also get it 100% accurate, which is going to resolve a whole lot for Barbarical. Barbarical can set up Stealth Rocks, and this is something that it's not usually forced to do so, but as I said before, the pickpocket set is there for a reason, and at the same time, if you don't want to go for, of course, a more sweeper variant, a more defensive offensive set with Stealth Rocks could definitely be capitalized on. I'm not saying it's highly recommended, but they are able to do so in a league concept. Being able to capitalize on Stealth Rock and not necessarily using it is always going to be a good thing. But overall here, it's very clear that Barbarical is definitely forcing itself to be the physical proudness on its own as a possible mixed offensive presence. But as a whole here, it doesn't have as many variants as uh, Karakasa is having. But it's very clear that it hits a lot harder than Karakasa even could in the first place. So what this dialogue basically boils down to is whether or not the extra speed on Barbarical, though the lacklustering move pull to some extent really goes over Karakasta, or of course if Karakasta's defensive pull and variety really are enough to outmaneuver Barbarical. And you know, going on this back and forth is really isn't that simple. They are so much alike, and I really, really, really like the bandit set on Karakasta, and I'll even go so far and say the solid rock and being defensively active with the 33, of course, defensive boost should really outshine the physical prowess of the 33% boost in its physical prowess on Barbarical. And I really, really, really wasn't forced to think so for the longest time. Then Ultra Sun and Moon came out, and it was very clear that Barbarical got a very strong boost in liquidation. And while already it was a strong threat with Grass Knot and whatnot, it just become that, yeah, Caracosta has the more variety and being a different set, but Barbarical really, really peaks at one set that is just out of this world. It is one of the strongest Pokemon in the game due to Shell Smash combination with Tough Claw, and even with this generation in mind, I probably would have said the same even in the end of the video, but for me, it's very clear that while Caracosta is fairly unique defensively, the typing doesn't allow it to be defensively active as much. Barbarical has a superior speed, doesn't necessarily need to get hit in the first place, which makes Barbarical, in my opinion, the stronger between these two. And I really think this was a tough choice to make, because Caracosta has stated, one of my favorite Pokemon Generation 5, I really really enjoy this Pokemon, I think it's very good, I like its combination, but it's very clear that you know it is a niche at best in the higher tiers, 
while Barbarical is super relevant in every tier actually due to its offensive typing on her own. And now with Aurora Veil in mind, it is able to set up Shell Smash and not necessarily being able to be outspeeded. There are options here for Barbarical that really just make that Pokemon better. And I definitely think both of these Pokemon are very underappreciated and forgotten considering what they can do. But after going over them like this, I'll even go so far and say that Barbarical should not be as low as it is. Use that once and you kind of realize there is nothing on par with this combination. And being able to be an offensive variant with a better speed, yeah, Barbarical has a lot of things to offer a team, which really, really makes it a scary Pokemon. And I'm very surprised people haven't picked up on this as much as they had already. So, with that said, guys, I really want to thank you for course joining this episode. If you have a matchup you want to see, make sure to say it in the comment section down below, and they will be voted on on Friday on the Twitter channel or my Twitter group. Anyway, guys, as always, thank you for, of course, watching and join us next time for these two monsters.